Hey there, everyone. It's episode 65 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, the only place to hear the best conversations about the martial arts, like today's episode, where we talk about feeling bored with your martial arts training. I'm the founder here at Whistlekick, but I'm better known as your host, Jeremy Lesniak. Whistlekick, in case you don't know, makes the world's best sparring gear and some awesome apparel and accessories for you traditional martial artists out there. I'd like to welcome our new listeners and thank all of you returning fans. If you're not familiar with our products, you can learn more about them at whistlekick.com. All of our past podcast episodes, show notes, and a lot more are at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Today's episode also has a full transcript with some photos, a few videos, and some links over on the website. If you're listening from a computer, you might want to follow along with everything we've got posted. And while you're over there, go ahead and sign up for our newsletter. We offer exclusive content to subscribers, and it's the only place to find out about upcoming guests. Now let's dig into today's subject. If you've been involved in the martial arts for any real length of time, you've likely felt burnt out at some point. While we have had a few guests on the show who have claimed to be excited to train every time, every day, that's not the norm. In fact, the inspiration for this episode came from conversations I had with guests right here on Martial Arts Radio. I've always viewed the subject, this whole feeling uninspired or even boredom, as taboo in the martial arts realm. See, as a child, I only had a few people in my world to discuss these subjects with. And when I tried to talk about it, they made me feel like there was something wrong with me, that I didn't care about my training or my instructors or the opportunity to train. Whatever it was, it was my fault. I now know that it's not my fault. It's no one's fault. It's simply a situation that can and, for most of us, does happen. After all, the majority of people stop training martial arts at some point, right? How often do people stop doing something they absolutely love? Even if they can't afford class, they could do some training at home. You see what I mean? No. I'd argue that nearly every one of those people that stops training does so because they became bored, or they felt uninspired, or just otherwise lost the inspiration to train. And if it's happening to most of the people that stop training, Is there some magic difference between them and those of us that continue to train? I doubt it. In fact, I'd swear that there wasn't a difference. I think we all have different motivations for why we're in the martial arts, and some of those motivations are going to be more tolerant of stress than others. But enough of beating the existence of the subject to death. Let's talk about how to handle it. I'd much rather spend the time offering you actionable ideas than simply commiserate with you over a problem we face together. The first thing you want to do is try and identify the source of your challenge. What has changed for you since you started martial arts? Give some time to think about that. Why you? Why did you start training in the first place? If you enjoyed the challenge initially, maybe you feel like you've attained a certain level of proficiency and that fire to improve is gone now. If that's the case, your solution is pretty easy. You need to learn more difficult things. While there are a lot of different problems and symptoms that we could stack up here, everything from feeling unchallenged to an intolerance of repetition to constant injury, I'd rather give you the solutions. These options are the best ways I know of for how to combat the martial arts blues, and I've learned them over my years of training. So yes, let me be really blunt here. I get bored with my training from time to time. After doing anything for a period of time, I can get bored. I like variety. I crave it. But I've been doing martial arts longer than I've done anything else. Why? Because I love it. And just because you don't feel the urge to train right now and in this moment does not mean you don't love the martial arts. Okay. So let me say it again. It's okay. It's okay to feel bored. It's okay to feel uninspired. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. There. You feel better? (laughs) If nothing else, I feel better and wish I could go back in time and tell my younger self this. But let's move forward. So I promised you some solutions. So let's do that now. Number one, try training at a different time of day or on a different day entirely. If you're lucky enough to belong to a school that offers classes at different times of day or you know a bunch of days out of the week, try mixing up your schedule. You're going to see different people than you normally see. The instructor themselves may be different. And if nothing else, the energy of the class will be different. 
different people create a different learning environment, and that alone can be enough sometimes. Number two, take some time off. I went through several years where I take the month of August off of my training. It's hot, there's a lot of great outside stuff to do, and more importantly, I found that by taking martial arts out of my life for a little bit, it allowed me to miss it. I came back in September invigorated, anxious to get going again, and really tackled the things I was working on. Some people will argue and say that it's too easy to not come back if you step away. But if that's the case, maybe you shouldn't be taking martial arts, at least not when and where you are. Which is a great third option. Look at taking classes at another school. Most of us are lucky enough to have multiple martial arts schools in our area. And whether you make a permanent switch or a temporary one, or maybe just supplement your main martial arts classes with additional classes at another school, that can really shake things up too. Different instructors explain things in sometimes really different ways, even if they're in the same style and in the same school. If it feels appropriate, I'd strongly recommend talking to your instructor about any training you're doing at another school, especially if you're going to stay at your current school. Try taking some private lessons. Most people seem to respond well to challenges, and not everyone feels challenged by the general format of a martial arts class, especially as you progress in rank. Having a private lesson, even if it's with the same instructor that runs the classes you intend, can be an exciting experience. To have someone fine tune your technique or help you adapt something you're working with to your own personal martial arts situation, it can really give you context for your overall training. Number five, competition can be a great option to feel inspired. A lot of us are goal oriented and outside the preparation for a test, martial arts doesn't give us a lot of firm goals. A competition or a tournament is a great goal because it's on an absolute day and it will generally involve people you don't know. Choose a local competition and set a goal for attending, entering certain events, maybe even aim for a certain result. I don't think the result is necessary for everyone, but it might be for you. Whatever the case, tell your family, tell your close friends about the goal, ask them to help hold you accountable. Maybe you want to tell your instructor. Your instructor may offer some feedback to your training that's appropriate for the competition. Maybe give you some special drills, or I've even seen instructors adjust class time to upcoming competitions. Number six, you can set goals for other things too. Maybe a particular technique or achieving another challenge, like breaking a certain number of boards with a technique. Again, the key is having an adequate level of difficulty. Don't make it too hard. And you got to make it a priority. Telling people about your goal, writing it down, reading that out loud a few times a day. Basically, anything you can do to help hold yourself accountable is a good thing. Number seven, take a seminar. I've been to quite a few different seminars with different martial artists teaching different things, different styles, and they can be a lot of fun. And this can be a really great option too because it's not as dramatic as changing schools, but it still puts you around new people and you're learning new things. Like I said earlier, that different dynamic, that different energy can really be incredible and help you feel a lot better. I recently attended a seminar that made me rethink the way I hold my hands during sparring. My, my guard might be off from where it should be. And just that simple realization has forced me to look at everything I do differently. And I enjoy that. I like that challenge of having to adjust the way I do things. Number eight, you could work out on your own. I know this sounds counterintuitive. How can doing more of something on your own time make you enjoy it more? Well, it's all about context. If you train on your own, you'll naturally gravitate towards working on the things you enjoy most. And by doing that, you'll get better at those things, and that's going to make you feel really good. Seeing improvement in something you enjoy is really motivating. And it's not just motivating for you, it's motivating for the people around you. Number nine, remember that martial arts isn't just what goes on in training. You're a martial artist, right? You're not just a martial artist while you train. 
It's a 24 hour day, seven day a week, 365 day a year status. So long as you consider yourself a martial artist and you walk that path, you are one. Training is only part of the path. Here on this show, we talk about a lot of great books and movies that are entertaining, but also educational. You can't tell me that watching Bruce Lee or Jackie Chan isn't inspiring. Now, this next piece is going to sound silly, I know, but sometime when you're alone, put on a martial arts movie and imagine yourself in the role of the hero. If you have the space, even act out their fight sequences. It can bring a lot of life to what you're doing, and that visualization of pretending to be a hero in the midst of battle is actually one of the ways I work with people on helping them improve their martial arts forms. To associate martial arts with an entertainment medium that you enjoy, like movies, can really be great. Go watch a Bruce Lee movie, and then the next time you go to class, be Bruce Lee. Which brings me to number 10. Work out to music. One of my current internal dilemmas is the place for music in martial arts training. On the one hand, it can really be distracting, and pumping loud music through a traditional place of training seems blasphemous to me. But on the other hand, training with music is really motivating and exciting, and it can help spice things up. But if you're training on your own, it doesn't matter. You get to choose how you train, and I love training with music, especially when I'm working with combinations. So I think we'll leave it there. 10 is a great number, and maybe we'll turn this into some list that will go viral and have martial artists all over the world feeling reinvigorated. Well, probably not, but 10 is still a good number. Really, all of these ideas come back to the idea that topping off the tank, so to speak, is what we're, what we're looking to do. Martial arts is a passionate activity. You're giving so much of yourself over to it, and that only gets increasingly true with time and skill. When you give of yourself to something, you need to get back or you fall out of balance. Now, you've probably heard me say on the show and even maybe some of the pieces that go out over social media, one of my favorite sayings, martial arts is going to give back to you exactly and only what you put into it. But sometimes the amount that you put in fades or I think more often, we have a hard time seeing what's coming back to us from the martial arts. Now, whatever you do, it's best to face any of these feelings of boredom or a lack of motivation or frustration quickly, because if you don't, they're just going to get worse. They're going to grow. Now, I hope that whatever you do, you don't quit. I believe that you are better off as a martial artist, and I believe the world is better off because you are one. So, what did you think of today's episode? Leave us a comment somewhere, either on the website or on social media. Do you have strategies that we didn't talk about today? I know there are a bunch more, and we'd love to hear from you on them. Let us know what you think, and that way we can pass that information on to others, and they can benefit. You can find the show notes and a place for leaving those comments at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And as to social media, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram, all with the username, Whistlekick. If you want to be a guest on the show or you know someone that has some good stories or great ideas, go ahead, fill out the form on the website, and don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter while you're over there. That way you can stay up on everything we do. And if you want to learn more about the products we offer, you can learn more about those at Whistlekick.com. Since you've already listened this far, I know you like the show. So I'm going to ask you, please help us out. Subscribe or download one of the apps. We have apps for iOS and for Android, and that way you'll never miss out on one of our future episodes. We bring these shows to you twice a week, and while we love the support of your business, the big thing that we ask for, please help us out with a review. If you're an iOS user, head on over to iTunes, drop us the review there. If you're listening on Android, there are several different places. Usually whatever podcast app you're using is the place to do it. So go ahead, help us out. We appreciate it. Thank you in advance. But that's all for today. So until next episode, train hard, smile, and have a great day.